It was only a matter of time until Hello Games finally unveils their latest exciting project, Light No Fire. And it has been in development for a number of years now, and we had heard whispers about its existence for a couple of years prior to the official announcement. The game could be described as one of the first true open worlds because it takes us to a fantasy world the size of our very own Earth, and we get to explore every single inch of it with our friends. On the face of it, you may assume this is a less ambitious concept to their previous title, No Man's Sky, because that gave us a near-infinite universe full of around 18 quintillion planets to explore. So, how on earth can this single planet concept be just as ambitious, if not more so? Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and find out how. So, Light No Fire is set to take place on an actual Earth-sized planet where we can build, explore, and survive together. Hello Games describes Light No Fire as a game about adventure, building, survival, and exploration. Set on a fantasy planet the size of Earth, it brings the depth of a role-playing game to the freedom of a survival sandbox. Now of course, Light No Fire is an open world game in the most literal sense of the words as it takes on one of the most common player requests, myself included in that, from No Man's Sky and that is diverse biomes on one single celestial body. Light No Fire will feature all sorts of biomes ranging from oceans to deserts, forests to mountain ranges and absolutely everything in between. Sean Murray himself also claims that some of the mountains in this game will be higher than Everest which is nuts. Tell you what, I'll give you a sense of scale of Light No Fire in comparison to some of the biggest and best open world games out there right now in just a minute because it will absolutely blow your mind. It's pretty clear from the trailer that there's going to be many more RPG elements to Light No Fire than there ever was in No Man's Sky, including in-depth character creation as we can become one of a range of species, including a human, a rabbit, a fox, a badger, a bear, a wolf, or an otter. Sounds interesting, right? There'll also be a variety of playstyles from the look of things as well because you'll notice in parts of the trailer that there are different weapons and combat styles throughout it. We can see sword and shields for those up close battles and if ranged combat is more your thing then we can use bow and arrows as they're featured as well. And there is also a staff which could mean we get to wield magic. It's definitely a possibility because it is a fantasy land after all with a wide range of mystical creatures roaming around. But anyway, you guys want to know why it's as ambitious, if not more so, than No Man's Sky. So let's get on to that. So with Light No Fire containing one single planet to explore versus an entire universe, you may struggle to grasp just how or why it seems a little bit more ambitious. Well, let me start off by going over the size of a few of the best open world games of the last decade or so. So let's start off with Grand Theft Auto V as a quick example. The map on there is a measly 29 square miles, which isn't that big in the grand scheme of things. And then if you take The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt as another example, that map is 49 square miles in total, which again, doesn't sound that big. So what about Death Stranding? Well, that steps it up a gear and that is 230 square miles. And again, this is just a tiny speck in comparison to Light No Fire. So let's step it up even further and talk about the crew. That used the entire of continental USA for its map, and even that was only roughly 1,900 square miles in size, which is starting to sound pretty big, right? But enough of that, let's talk about the size of Light No Fire's planet. So, considering Light No Fire's planet will be on a one to one scale of our Earth's surface, that puts the square miles of the map at roughly, wait for it, 197 million square miles, which is just a staggering undertaking. That is just over 4 million times larger than the map of The Witcher 3, and 856,000 times larger than the map in Death Stranding. It is utterly bonkers, especially for a small team the size of Hello Games. Now, of course, you probably want to compare it to No Man's Sky. So, the average planet size on No Man's Sky is roughly 80 square miles, but obviously you can get some bigger planets and some smaller planets, but it is roughly 2.5 million times larger than the average planet size in No Man's Sky. So, if Hello Games can actually pull this off, it will be utterly remarkable. And the scale of things doesn't stop there. So Sean Murray claimed that the planet of light no fire will have mountains higher than Everest, and according to a number of sources, it would take around two months for a round trip to the summit of Mount Everest, two fecking months in real life. 
So we are going to be able to spend years exploring this massive planet in Light No Fire without seeing the same place twice. Now, a lot of you could be watching this and thinking, yeah, well, it takes 585 billion years to explore everything in No Man's Sky. These numbers are minuscule in comparison. And whilst that is true, once you've played No Man's Sky long enough like me, you've effectively seen everything the game has to offer. Like all planets will look similar, they don't have varied biomes on them, and they certainly won't contain as much content as the planet in Light No Fire. Just to be clear, I am not bashing No Man's Sky at all here by the way. I truly love that game and it's a staggering achievement in its own right. And I have sunk hundreds upon hundreds of hours into it and I will continue to do so for years to come most likely. I'm merely just making comparisons of scale to show you just how vast this single planet in Light No Fire actually is. Anyway, back to it, mountains aren't the only major biome or landscape or other Earth-like feature that we can explore either. Hello Games also say, every mountain can be climbed and below them lie endless vistas, oceans and continents perhaps no others have seen. Who will climb the tallest mountains, who will find the deepest sea, set sail across vast oceans and rivers, ride wild beasts through fantastical landscapes, fly dragons over undiscovered landscapes. You know what that tells me? DRAGONS! Sorry. But also, we can dive into the depths of oceans, and I assume these are going to be deep, like actual ocean deep, not the depths of a large swimming pool like the ones we see in No Man's Sky. To build a game with mountains as big, if not bigger than the actual Mount Everest, and to potentially build oceans as deep as the Pacific in the same damned Earth-sized world, would be an incredible feat. Only time will tell if Hello Games can actually pull it off. A single planet on this scale, with no boundaries, no loading screens, this much content within it, including multiplayer content and the ability to walk over and explore every single inch of it hasn't really been undertaken in game development before. Sure, there are some games with larger universes, but they tend to be a little empty, much like Starfield. But Light No Fire looks to be insanely big, and hopefully, packed full of content. In order to create a full-scale Earth-sized planet with 197 million square miles to explore, it will obviously use procedural generation, much like No Man's Sky and Starfield and other games, because creating handcrafted content in a world this big would take far too long, even for a team of hundreds of developers. The description from Hello Games here is, a truly open world with no boundaries at a scale never attempted before. A massively varied and dense planet filled with immersive biomes, unique enemies, and viable resources to discover. And to me, that tells me there should hopefully be a shed load of stuff going on, and it won't just be open, empty space. The basic premise of procedural generation in the context of Light No Fire is Hello Games will have designed a boatload of textures, building assets and materials, biome assets, water-based assets, creatures, and so on. Then it will use an algorithm or a bunch of various algorithms to turn these into one giant Earth-sized map. It's not a brand new concept, as seen in a bunch of other games, including the likes of Minecraft, Starfield, and No Man's Sky itself, but it keeps improving as the years go on, meaning the generated maps become less repetitive, and the blend between generated content and handcrafted content will be far more diverse. And it sounds like Hello Games have been developing this game for five years now, and in that time, they will have created a boatload of handcrafted content, which we will see throughout the game world. And I largely suspect it will be far more varied and packed full of stuff than the planets we find in No Man's Sky. With the game being a multiplayer world, we will be able to not only play with our friends, but also stumble upon random players and their creations as we explore the game world. And this is what Hello Games have to say on it about it being a multiplayer Earth. So, carve a life together, meet players from across the globe, build a life, explore and survive together. Construct persistent buildings and communities or strike out alone to discover the world for others. It all sounds damn good, doesn't it? Now, it's unclear just how big the servers will be and whether or not we'll be able to only see creations from people playing the same game mode, similar to No Man's Sky. And that is also assuming there are actually going to be game modes as well. But the fact that we can explore this boundless giant world and stumble upon other players and other players' creations, which persist for everyone, is a damn difficult task in itself. 
But the good news is, Hello Games have already achieved something similar in the past, so I'm putting my faith in them for this one. We probably shouldn't be too worried about the state of Light and Fire come its release as well, because for one thing, Hello Games don't have Sony Group breathing down their neck, trying to shove the game out the door as soon as possible. Instead, this time round, they can release it whenever they deem the game is ready to go. Now, release not, may not be as soon as you'd hope because of this, but it will certainly be worth the wait if Hello Games hold off until they're fully ready and the game includes everything they want it to. And most importantly, no damn bugs. It's also not out of the question to assume there will be major content updates in the years following the release, as they've been doing the same thing with No Man's Sky for nearly eight years. And I for one am certainly hoping they release major content updates in the years following, because it is one of the main reasons myself and likely thousands of others still play No Man's Sky eight years later. Though with that being said, at the same time, it is very important to rein in our expectations of the initial launch of the game, because Whilst I don't envisage for one second that the same disaster that occurred with No Man's Sky launch will also happen with Light No Fire, the reality is it might not be perfect, and it might not be exactly what everyone is expecting it to be. But the main thing is, you can rest assured that Hello Games will make it right if there is something wrong at launch, but hopefully there'll be no issues, and if there are issues, hopefully they're only minor non-game breaking bugs. Now on to release dates. And currently, as of the time of me recording this, there is no information about the release date or even a release window of Light No Fire. But my slightly educated guess would be it's probably going to release, or at least we'll know the release date, second half of 2025. Because Hello Games wanted a shorter window from official announcement to the release date than No Man's Sky, which was three years. And they announced Light No Fire in December 23. And as for release platforms, one would assume this will only be released on the latest consoles. So PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X, and of course PC, because anything else simply wouldn't be able to handle a game on this scale. Now that you've heard me waffling on about Light No Fire and its gigantic scale and unbelievable ambition, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it as well. Are you as excited for it as I am? Do you have any worries about it? Are there any particular features you'd love to see in the game included? Let me know in the comments section below. And there you have it folks, there is why I think Light No Fire is as ambitious, if not more so, than No Man's Sky, and I for one cannot wait for it to be released. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're still here, it would be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You can also become a channel member as well, and as always, Thank you for watching this video and I shall catch you in the next one.